heard the news that Saab had closed down, Jeremy and I were genuinely very sad. Although we weren't actually sure why, so we went to investigate. Saab began as an aeroplane maker, but after the Second World War, it noticed that demand for fighter planes had dropped off dramatically. So it decided to start making cars as well. The first effort was created by two men, one who designed wings and one who designed bomb racks. Neither had done a car before and it kind of showed. Their prototype had enclosed front wheels, which was very aerodynamic. But as you drove along in winter, snow would build up in the arches and it was only when you got to a corner you noticed the steering had jammed. There were other issues too. The rear window was tiny and there was no boot lid. Mass production wasn't their bag either. While Austin made a car every 27 seconds, it took Saab 27 minutes. Oh, and all their cars were painted green. So, a green car with no boot you could use and in bad weather, no steering. But the biggest problem in those early days was the engine, as James shall now explain. This is the 92. It was Saab's first production car, and it came with a thirsty two-stroke engine that produced just 25 horsepower. The real problem, however, is that the engine was only lubricated when you had your foot on the throttle. Because in a two-stroke, the engine oil is mixed with the fuel. So if there's no fuel going in, there's no oil going in. Now, this wasn't an issue when you were driving along on the level like this or going up a hill, because you always had your foot on the throttle and you always had the fuel and oil going in. However, once you were going downhill like this, you had a problem. You had to brake with your left foot, but, whoa, keep the power on a bit with your right foot so that the engine still got some oil. Whoa, this is very tricky. And it feels it's stupid. I'm driving and stopping at the same time. And then, of course, you'd arrive at the bottom of the hill with your brakes completely boiled over, and your 65 mile an hour Saab would be absolutely unable to stop. It's hopeless. Saab's history is littered with terrible mistakes like this. There was the 900 convertible, which was as rigid as a week old salad. There was the Sonnet, which was supposed to have been a sports car, but wasn't. And then in 1992, they even made a car with no steering wheel. In fact, the more you drive this, the easier it becomes. The temptation is to just stare at the end of the bonnet in wonderment that you can actually have any directional control at all. So, lots of Swedish strangeness and an advertising campaign that didn't make much sense either. Only one aircraft manufacturer makes cars. Sierra, Alpha, Alpha, Bravo. Yes, Saab loved to remind us that their cars came from a company that made jet fighters. But it was nonsense. This jet fighter, for example, had an engine made by Volvo. Saab, it's a pity other cars aren't built this way. 